Welcome to another Helena Industries report. My name is Carolyn Belling and I am the Executive Assistant at Helena Industries. And this is Carrie Jones, the co-host of the show. Hi, I'm Carrie Jones. Um, as she said, I'm the co-host of the HI report. I'm also the uh, Administrative Assistant for Peers Unlimited. I also work for Work first at Helena Industries. On the Helena Industries report, we like to invite on different community members and organizations um, that provide services and opportunities to people with disabilities. And today we have three special guests with us. Um, I'm really excited about today's show. We have um, two Carroll College students yeah. with us and also a dog, a service animal. Um, so we have Bridget Blush and Allie Hans. They're both um, anthropology students at Carroll College. And yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Yeah, and Ramey, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, do you guys want to start off and just kind of, um, I guess one of the reasons why I initially wanted you to come on and why Carrie wanted you to come on is just to explain to us and to the community kind of the different types of support animals that there are. So there are three different types of support animals. There's a service dog, an emotional support animal, also known as an ESA, and a therapy dog. And now these three definitely, um, they're different. A service dog is a dog that is specifically trained to mitigate a disability. And this means they have full public access, which they go everywhere with you, to the restaurants, movies, shopping, anywhere you can imagine, they'll be with you. And um, an emotional support animal is um, an animal that provides emotional support and those dogs or animal, any kind of animal that can actually be an emotional support animal, they're not allowed to go in public. So they are allowed to fly and they get housing um, rights, but they don't, they're not allowed to go in public. I actually had one of those. Um, I recently lost him in May. His name was Shifu. So uh, he was with me through everything, so. They're pretty amazing to have, and the bond is amazing. He had, he knew what to do with me um, from the start, so the bond is pretty amazing. Whether you have a service dog or an emotional support dog or whatever you have, the bond is just amazing. What are some of the other types of emotional support animals that people typically have besides for dogs? So a lot of the times they'll have um, like an emotional support cat or rabbit. Some people will have guinea pigs. Um, I know some people occasionally will have like a pet pig that they have, mm -hmm. um, reptiles, um, really pretty much anything can be an emotional support animal. Um, and in order to obtain one of those, typically you have to have um, a note from a psychiatrist or a psychologist stating that having that animal with you will benefit you with day-to-day -day life um, as far as like the emotional stuff that, you know, comes up in your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, and then does that give you different, um, are you able to then have them in your house, easier to rent places with that animal? What's the benefit of having that actual label um, placed on the animal? So uh, the, under the Fair Housing Act, um, emotional support animals are allowed to live in no pet apartment complexes or houses. Um, as long as you can supply that letter stating that um, you will benefit from having that animal with you. Mm -hmm. um, and so you obtain that from your psychologist and it's um, all under the DSM-5 as well, which is what they follow. Um, and then they are also covered under the um, Air Carrier Access Act. And so you can fly with them as well. So like you can fly with your um, emotional support dog or cat um, if you're going somewhere, especially too if you get really stressed out with flying um, and it just, it helps to just have something that can be with you um, while you're in that stressful time. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Okay, yeah. so 
Go ahead. What's the process of getting a actual service dog in training? Um, what's the process of that? It can be a pretty lengthy process. So first, um, the doctor has to diagnose you with a disability. And then ultimately the dog has to be task trained and those tasks are trained for your uh, disability to be mitigated. And so most dogs start at eight weeks old and they start their public access training and just basic commands. And it can be up to about two years until a service dog is fully trained. So it's pretty long. <laughs> and Allie, Ramey is your dog, correct? Yes, she is my service dog, my okay. medical alert dog. Yeah, and you've had her for three years? Uh, yeah, three years now, oh. so she's she helps me be an independent person each day. I couldn't live my life without her. Um, she has my back all the time and just helps me be normal, I guess you could say. <laughs> and uh, she's made a huge difference in my life. Well, we're excited to see some of the things that she can do. So um, yeah. Carrie had an idea. Is now a good time to yeah. Yeah. maybe see if she wants to pick up the <laughs> keys, Carrie? You want to try yes. to free me? Should we just, just toss, yeah, them just toss them down? Throw them right on the ground. All right. Ramey, get it. Get nice, good girl. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, when people, you know, they can't if they drop something and can't bend down to nice. grab it, it's nice to have a dog that's trained to pick it up for you, whether it be keys, your cell phone, the TV remote, um, really anything. Um, and then another thing too that they can be taught is how to take something from one person to another. And yeah. so, <laughs> Remy, come here. So like I can give her this remote and have her take it to Allie. Remy, take it. Give it to Allie. Nice, good girl. Yeah, so then if you were like to go to the bank and you needed to give something to um, the clerk on the other side, you can have your dog um, put their feet up on the counter and mm -hmm. hand it to them and then, or vice versa, if they have to give you something over the counter and you can't exactly reach, um, the dog can jump up, get it, and bring it to you. Okay. Yeah, so. and there's a bunch of different tasks that a service dog could be trained for. Um, Ramey knows how to open a fridge, grab a water bottle, close the fridge, and give that water bottle to me. And it helps when I'm in an episode and I can't get out of bed so she can grab me water, take my medication, and she's, it's pretty cool what service dogs That's can do. Awesome. Yep, and you That's can, great. yeah, and That's they can awesome. turn um, on and off lights as well. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see if she does this nifty one. <laughs> switchboard. And this is a lot of times when training a dog, you'll start with just a board like this um, mm -hmm. that has just a basic light switch that's not connected to anything to just kind of get them used to it, going up to it, and turning it on and off um, without ruining the light switch. So yeah. switches in your house, because occasionally they'll get really excited and they'll start um, like pawing at it or you know really trying to turn it on. Um, and so yeah, Ramey, can you do it? Ramey, light. Light. Come on. Nice, good girl. There you go. <laughs> good job. Hey, now is she responding more to your um, Verbal commands or? Um, she kind of varies, so okay. she's interesting because if I point at something, she'll go to it, but for like a light, I just have to, I'll point at it, but I actually have to tell her to turn the light on. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll get, um, I just have to show her where the object is, like which object I want her to get, and then she'll bring it to me. That's great. Yeah. How do you s apply to get a service dog? Is that? A long process or? Can I go or you want me to go? Me? Okay, so there's um, a few different organizations that you can go through to um, apply for a service animal. Um, some of the big ones that you hear about are Guide Dogs for the Blind um, based out of California um, and they train service, uh, service guide dogs for people that are blind. Um, Canine Companions for Independence uh, also trains mm -hmm. um, dogs for a wider variety um, of, you know, for different tasks and stuff, not just limited to the blind. Um, and then we actually have a graduate from our, from our program um, who started her own service dog training organization and just placed her first dog this last summer in July. Um, and so we're pretty proud of her for is that doing that. Um, no, her name is actually Lindsay and she has Healing Hound service dogs okay. based out of Portland, um, but she places dogs nationwide. I know so. Rochelle and she said she graduated from there. So. Yeah, actually she did. She was one of the first graduates of the program. Mm -hmm. How long is the She's training? training one of our dogs. 
one of her dogs for one of the guys in our building. So, um, so yeah, how long is the training and how long does it take? So training takes up to about two years. Um, the dog needs to understand their task work, which helps mitigate disability. So with Raimi, um, she can go off my scent and then she can alert me before an episode happens. And that took a little while for her to understand, but once she did, um, she's pretty good at it now. And there's a bunch of different tasks that a service dog can know. So for like with Canine Companions for Independence, a lot of them help people in wheelchairs and they can grab an item for them or turn off a light. And that takes up to about two years because the dog needs to get enough muscle to actually pull a person in a wheelchair or grab the item. And mm -hmm. It's a lengthy process, but ultimately you're gonna get a well-trained service dog that can pretty much do anything. So, so now I've heard um, from other people that I've talked to that you have to go away to a camp for about the two years. Is that um, still going on or do you stay here to typically, train? Typically a lot of organizations require for you to go to their campus for about two weeks where you will train with your service dog and pretty much bond with your service dog. And then after they send out trainers to help alumni if they're having a problem with their service dog or have a couple questions. So yeah, so you don't have to be there the full two years that the dog is being trained. Um, the dog will go to a puppy raiser who works on their public access and they're you know, making sure that they you know, behave well in public or able to just you know, lay down and not you know, make a sound. You don't really know that the dog is there until uh, you get it to leave. Um, and then, yeah, those two weeks are spent with, you know, teaching you how to work with the dog as well and um, building that bond and making sure that you have that bond. Um, and another reason, too, that it takes so long is that you want to make sure that the dog is going to do what you ask 99.9% .9 of the times. Um, because, you know, if you are stuck in the dark and you need the dog to go turn on the light and you ask him to turn on the light and turn on the light, but you're still stuck in the dark, um, you know, you want to make sure that they can get it on that first time. Yeah. Um, so. Well, it sounds like a great program at Carroll. Are you guys then actually in the process of training dogs while you're, is that what you do? Is that what you're learning to do? Yeah, as part so, of the um, so the anthrozoology program focuses on looking at the relationships and interactions between people and animals. And so we have an equine um, emphasis, a canine emphasis, and then we're starting a wildlife emphasis as well. Mm -hmm. um, so with the canine side, our junior year, we foster shelter dogs um, throughout, the, from, throughout the state of Montana and students, um, the students foster them, so the dogs are with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, for the time they have them until the day of graduation. And what we do is we focus more on teaching students how to train the dogs. Um, so we get to practice on teaching light switches and opening doors and cabinets. And we have our own um, house uh, on campus that is able to be used for everything like that. So we're not you know, wrecking stuff in the residence halls, trying to teach the dogs how to open cabinets in the dorm rooms and whatnot. Um, and so we focus, yeah, students can focus on um, service tasks. We also do uh, scent work as well. Um, so we have some students who were interested in scent work and then decided they wanted to do like diabetic alert. Mm -hmm. And so your senior year, you can do a specialized dog and train it for something you want to go into. So right now, um, I'm in the specialized class and I have a dog that I'm training for scent work. Um, on just narcotics and contraband for conservation work. And then there's another student who's training a dog for diabetic alert. Um, mm -hmm. And so then that dog at the end of the year, um, she'll continue training it for probably six months to another year, and then it'll be placed into a family um, for diabetic alert. Okay. So. Well, that's great. Well, if there are some of our viewers, I'm sure, um, and Carrie is interested in possibly getting one of these dogs, where, where can we go for more information? Um, so you're feel free. Uh, you're more than welcome to email us at anz at carol .edu, um, and that will go to um, it'll go to me, and I'll be able to um, answer your questions and whatnot. Uh, if there's something that I can't answer, I forward it on to one of the professors for anthrozoology. Um, and then you can also follow us on Facebook. If you go to um, if you just type in Carroll College Anthrozoology Department, our Facebook page will come up. And you can also look at uh, the website um, www.carol.edu slash academic dash programs slash anthrozoology and there's information on there about the program um, as well as how to contact us and some frequent questions that we get as well. Now okay. um, if I wanted to say 
start a GoFundMe page. Would you guys be interested in helping me get that started or to like pay for um, maybe, because I know Medicaid and uh, those guys don't cover like the cost of the dog or the training and stuff like that anymore. So. Yeah, we can definitely get you hooked up with some resources um, that would be able to help you uh, obtain a service dog. So okay. That would be, be awesome. More than happy to do that for you. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, great. Well, thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah. thank you for having us. <laughs> this was fun.